right, so for today's project, we are gonna talk yo-yos. If you've never made yo-yos, they can be addicting. They're the kind of thing you can throw in your purse and do while you're waiting at a soccer game or a doctor's appointment or a road trip or whatever it is. They're great for using up scraps or you can do them intentionally and make really cool designs. So Karen came up with this idea where you get the little felt pads that you put on the bottom of your chairs and you stuff them inside the yo-yo and since they're felt, you can put hot stuff on them and it makes a trivet. So we're gonna talk about that in a second. First, we're gonna talk, talk tips and tricks on making yo-yos. People have been making yo-yos for a really long time. They look like, they look like little dumplings. We used to take a cardboard shape and cut a circle and then baste stitch and pull it shut. Clover makes this really groovy tool called a yo-yo maker. It is totally worth the money and I'll show you why. One, you don't have to cut a circle first, so there's no cutting for circles. There's no eyeballing a consistent seam. What you have is two pieces. There's the outside and then there's the indention or the, um, the piece that snaps in. A couple of things to pay attention to when you're using a yo-yo maker. This, there's three little knobbies. Um, we're gonna call this the cup. There's three little knobs. And then the plate has three little lines. So when you put these together, the three lines match up with the three little nubs. What that does is see how it makes all the holes line up? If you just throw this in here anywhere and it's those things aren't lined up, then the holes don't line up and you can't sew it. You'll see why that matters in a second. I don't bother cutting the circle. I take a square. So this is the small yo-yo maker. We're using a four inch square as a tip. I usually take the corner of my square and face it up on that nub since I can't really see it, but I can eyeball it. So now I'm gonna take the line on my plate because I wanna match it up with the nub on my cup and pop it in there. You'll know it's in the right place when it clicks. Did you hear it click? If it doesn't click and it's still loose, then you're not ready to go, okay? So we're gonna center our piece of fabric. We're gonna pop our plate in there and we're gonna click it. If it doesn't click, take the top out and slide it around so those nubs line up, okay? So, we've got that all clicked in. Now, a lot of times, people will tell you to now take a pair of scissors and cut away the excess. I don't cut it away yet, okay? And this is the reason why I don't cut it. Um, I have tendonitis in this hand, so it's really hard for me to roll things. If you leave the fabric on there, you have a lot of fabric you can hold on to while you're stitching. If you cut it away first, it's harder to roll the fabric around and it's more maneuvering. This is just the way I like to do it. This is my favorite tool anytime I have to thread a fine thread into a small eyed needle. This uh, needle threader is also by Clover. You can tell by its icky color that I've had this for a very long time. The new ones I sell are much prettier colors. I'm gonna take my thread, I'm gonna lay it in this crack, I'm gonna put my needle in the hole that says needle slot, I'm gonna push this button. Do you see the thread jump? If the thread jumped, you know it threaded. Then you can just grab this loop, and pull the thread, pull the thread all the way through your needle, okay? This is super handy. This will not work with large eyed needles, so you have to make sure whatever needle you're using is a size that the needle threader will work in. I double my thread when I do this because I want it to be really strong because we're gonna kind of tug on it. So I'm gonna line my thread up. I'm gonna make a quilter's knot. If you're not sure how to make a quilter's knot, I've shown this a couple of times, I can show it again. We're gonna make an X. We're gonna put the thread on our, our pointer finger and we're gonna make an X with the needle. We're gonna wrap the thread around about four times and then pull the needle through. The reason this knot works really well with this technique is because I have double thread, because I want a knot that's big enough that it's not gonna pull through my fabric. You also don't want a very long tail. So I trim my tails down pretty close to the knot. So see how on the cup side of our yo-yo maker, we've got these little half moons this is how hard this technique is, right? I'm gonna pick a half moon, I'm gonna take my needle and stick it in one side of the moon and down the other side. And then I'm literally just going to work all the way around going up and down. 
Since I have all this extra fabric on the back, it's really easy to hold on to as I'm stitching the fabric down. We're just going to stitch all the way around the circle. So I have stitched almost all the way around my circle. This is my last little half moon. As this is another tip, I always stitch twice in the first moon because that lets my yo-yo really lock itself tight, okay? So I wanna drop my needle, don't cut your thread yet. Let your thread hang. Be very careful not to cut it in this step though. I'm gonna open my fabric back up, take my scissors, and cut around the edge of my yo-yo maker, kind of like cutting pie crust off the edge of your pan. This doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't even have to be pretty, but you don't want to have a whole bunch extra fabric, okay? So see how if we had trimmed that before, it would be harder to maneuver these small pieces? All right, so now we're going to take it out of the yo-yo maker. Still got our thread on there. We're going to push up through this hole in the back, and it pops out. Now we want to pull out this center piece. Now part of the reason we stitched this line twice was because it's really easy to just hold on to that section now and pull your thread. It turns into this little pouch. So as you pull the thread, it makes a little pocket, okay? This looks kind of a mess right now. But if we smoosh it out and make it round, the top part, I hold on to the middle and just pull my thread real tight so the whole thing closes up really nicely. Now the project that you have a pattern for, the table runner, uses just yo-yos. So I'm gonna show you how to stitch that shut. The trivet uses the yo-yo with one of these um, felt pads inside of it. So I'm gonna open my yo-yo back up so I can show you how to put the felt pad in. So before you close it all the way, you wanna make it larger than the pad. These are the one inch felt pads and you leave the stickers on the back because you want them to be able to slide inside of here neatly. So we're gonna set that inside and then we're just gonna pull our little bag tight again. And now it's stuffed. So it kind of looks like a little dumpling. The closing process is gonna be the same whether you've got the little dumpling in there, you got the little felt pad in there or not. Normally you want the thread to match your fabric so, so that it, it's invisible. I used white thread on purpose so that you could see what I was doing, okay? So when I pull this nice and tight, the thread pretty much disappears anyway because it's all kind of closed up inside there. The way that I like to close these is I will take a small stitch inside those two folds and I'll just kind of lock that stitch in. Then I go back in the same two folds and I tie a knot. So you want to make a loop and then through that loop take two stitches. Now pull that tight and the knot will sink down into the folds. Then if you take the needle and you run it through the side of your dumpling, now you can trim this off over here, okay? Now we're gonna talk a couple of tools I really like for making these little projects, okay? Look how cute that is. Then you're gonna go and you're gonna sew them together. These already have the little templates in them or the little um, felt pads in them. You're gonna sew them together to make a design. So I've got mine started, but it's still kind of all over the place right now. So my trivet is started over here and now I'm just stitching the little pieces together, okay? A couple of things that I like when I'm working on these, especially these ones that have the felt pads in them, you kind of have to push a little bit hard. I find that my thimble gets in the way when you're handling all this other stuff so I like these thimble pads. They're, they're little bits of leather with sticky on the back. I know exactly where I push my needle with and it's right there on my finger. I don't use the pad of my finger, I use kind of the side of my finger. 
which is why these are kind of nice because you can stick them wherever it is that you know you're going to be moving a needle over a lot okay so that is exactly where i use my thimble pad the other thing i like to use we talked about our handy dandy needle threader i also really like thread magic anytime i'm hand stitching anything with i use thread magic and what it is is it's almost like think of it like hair conditioner but for your thread so I'm gonna take my thread on my needle, lay it on top of my thread magic, and just run it through one or two times, okay? What that does is it puts a very small coating of conditioner on your thread. So now you get less knots, it's stronger going in and out of your fabric, and you'll just have better results with it all the way around. All right, so those are my tips for using yo-yos. So see how, see how cute our hot pad trivet is that I started to put together? And then this is what the table runner looks like. So it shows you, the pattern shows you in-depth instructions on how to make your little yo-yos and how to sew them together. But I hope these tips uh, make you more comfortable with making some yo-yos.